Hi friends, in this video I want to show the design of a so-called main catcher or Tesla solid state transformer SSTC which was made for demonstration purposes. First I note that this device doesn't have galvanic isolation from mains so it's better not to touch the working coil. The coil will be improved in the future. I plan to add audio modulation from Bluetooth thereby getting a singing coil. At this stage, this is a classic SSTS, except that an interrupter is built in here. This makes it possible to regulate both the frequency and the PWM, that is, the power of the device as a whole. I think you are familiar with the circuit of this device. It is often found on the net, built on just one field effect transistor. My version is built using a powerful high voltage IGBT transistor. And the circuit looks like this. The interrupter circuit, which is built on two NE555 timers, is taken from this article. You can find the link in the description. The interrupter works like this. So we have a switch at the input, preferably a double one, or a 6 ampere circuit breaker and a fuse. Further, the mains voltage is supplied to the chokes and a powerful diode, that is, in fact, we are already working with one half wave of the mains voltage. Next, we have the film capacitor and the Tesla circuit itself. Everything here is according to the classical diagram. The primary winding at the boosting secondary, the gate bias circuit, and protective zener diodes or suppressors. So, this is the whole generator. The bottom of the circuit is a current breaker, which is built on a NE555 microcircuit. Variable resistors provide frequency adjustment in the range from a few to 70 Hz and adjustment of pulse duty cycle. Next, rectangular pulses are fed to the gate of a powerful IGBT transistor, which will operate at a frequency set by the breaker, providing an interruption of the current in the power supply circuit of the Tesla transformer. Naturally, it starts only when the bottom transistor is open because it controls the work of the entire SSTC. By changing the duty cycle of the pulses, we can change the lower transistor's open state time, thereby changing the power of the device. The breaker is assembled on a compact printed circuit board which can be downloaded along with the general archive from the link in the description under the video. Also, you can order high quality factory printed circuit boards from our partner GLCPCB. In addition to printed circuit boards, the company is engaged in the creation of soldering stencils which greatly facilitates the assembly of boards on SMD. And the list of services also include 3D printing and board assembly. That is, you cannot bother at all, send all the project files to the company and they will make a board, solder the parts and print the case if necessary. In a word, you can even set up production while sitting at home. All this is offered at affordable prices and the quality is at the highest level. The link to the GLC website is in the description. Throttles are from fluorescent lamps at 40 to 70 watts. The power of the device directly depends on them. The more throttles connected in parallel, the greater the current and power in general. In my version, six throttles were used, although three are shown on the diagram. Why not only one, but more powerful throttle instead of six? This solution allows using toggle switches to turn on or off some of the throttles, thereby adjusting the power. Although in principle, one more powerful throttle is also possible. But I didn't have this and I was too lazy to winding from zero. Components I used six throttles from fluorescent lamps for 40 watts. Each pair of throttle is paralleled. In low power mode, we have only two throttles in the circuit. The next power range is activated by the first toggle switch, which adds a couple more throttles in parallel. In the maximum power mode, two more throttles are added to the circuit. Moreover, I strongly recommend adding throttles, that is closing the toggle switches that turn them on only after disconnecting the device from mains. 
The parameters of my throttles are as follows. Resistance 28 ohms, inductance about 750 millihenry, power 40 watts. Of course, these are the parameters of one throttle. The main switch is for 6 amps. At the same time, it is also a circuit breaker. I haven't even studied what kind of switch it is, but it is very fast and quite old, bought at the flea market. An electrical box served as housing for this design. Its dimensions are now in front of you. Switches for additional throttles are common mains 10 amperes. The secondary coil of the Tesla solid state transformer is wound on a plastic sewer pipe with an outer diameter of 75 mm and inner diameter of 70 mm. The wire has a diameter of 0.2 mm, winding length is 240 mm. Winding was done with a screwdriver. Here are some shots of the winding process. The finished coil was impregnated with epoxy resin and this process was perhaps the most painstaking. The resin lay down evenly but all the time I had to rotate the workpiece. But even the resin didn't save. During the experiments there was electoral breakdown in the coil in some places so I had to additionally isolate it with five layers of acrylic varnish. It turned out not quite neatly but it was reliable. The primary winding is wound on a sewer pipe with a diameter of 10 cm. The wire for winding is stranded with a cross section of 8 squares. The number of turns is 4. The lower turn of this winding is located at a height of about 30 mm from the lower edge of the pipe and I gave this value for a reason. Optimum work is obtained only with this alignment. The movement of this winding along the secondary wind changes the characteristics of the device. The lower the winding is located, the worse the work. The higher the better, but there is a high probability of a breakdown from the secondary coil to the primary. The toroid was 3D printed, has a diameter of 177 mm and was then glued with an aluminum tape. Its size was chosen empirically. Streamers with smaller toroids will be smaller. Without a toroid, it wasn't possible to get along vertical streamers. They were omnidirectional and with a higher frequency. With small toroids, it has often been observed that not all of the energy from the device is transferred to the streamer. The discharges were shot, but the input current consumption was impressive. As a result, the optimal characteristics were obtained with this torus. By the way, I found the torus model on a popular site. I will leave a link to the page in the description. And in the project archive, there will be resized model that is optimal for this coil. The upper end of the winding goes to a sharp pin 50 mm long, and a lot also depends on its length. Between the coil and the torus there is such an intermediate part which was also printed on a 3D printer. This detail is in order to provide some distance from the upper edge of the secondary winding to the torus. Without it, corona discharges were observed from the edges of the torus and as a result the length of the main streamer was reduced. The lower end of the high voltage coil goes to a screw which is screwed to the top of the main body of the device and then goes to the IGBT gate according to the circuit. The plug for this part of the structure is a regular circle cut out of plexiglass and glued to the pipe with B7000 glue. The design includes a low power 1 amp 12 volt switching power supply that powers the control circuit and cooling fan. A 12 volt fan blows warmer air out from under the case. There are several air intake holes in the bottom of the case. The control system and power supply are screwed to a plastic bracket, which was also printed. Everything is pretty reliable here. NE555 microcircuits are installed on sockets, which in case of problems ensure instant replacement without the use of a soldering iron. There are a couple of switches on the side. They turn on additional throttles, thereby increasing the power of the device. On the front panel we have three variable resistors. A couple of them are responsible for the frequency and power of the device. The third sets the gate bias. And for fine tune of this value I use the powerful multi-turn resistor. Although this resistor can be replaced with a constant one, the variable one makes it possible to choose the optimal operating mode individually depending on the transistor used. 
Power transistors are mounted on a common radiator through heat conducting spacers. In my case, very cool IGBT transistors, IRG PS40B120U were used in the Super T0247 package. The emitter collector voltage is 1200 volts. The collector current is 40 to 80 amperes, depending on the temperature. Although these are very cool transistors, they are quite outdated. They have an impressive saturation voltage and consequently heating and they are also slow. It may seem to you that the output current from a poor 555 timer will not be enough to control such a heavy transistor and you need a driver. I hasten to assure you the opposite. Here the frequencies are so low that the timer doesn't strain at all. Transistors were installed on a large radiator from some old diets, plus cooling with a fan. Due to the high collector emitter voltage, these transistors, without any additional protective suppressors and damper circuits, worked for a long time for several days and endured all my bullying, though I still burned one out of carelessness. As already said, this transformer is made for demonstration purposes. The length of the streamers reaches 25 to 30 cm and it isn't worth trying to get more from a reel of this size and design. The coil is able to work for a long time in different modes. Cooling allows this. Fluorescent lamps are illuminated at a distance of about a meter from the coil. The control works fine. In the future, an audio modulation system with Bluetooth will be added here and there will be a singing coil. Moreover, nothing needs to be changed in the circuit, only the Bluetooth module will be added. So, for this reason, at this stage the project isn't yet completed and everything inside the case looks terrible. This, my friends, was one of my intermediate projects, which isn't related at all to the main ones that I'm currently doing. And if anyone is interested, now I am busy assembling several devices at once. Among them, a semi-automatic welding machine, powerful induction melting furnace with phase-looked loop, welding inverter for a current of 160 amperes with an arc afterburner, electrode anti-stick function, protection against low and high input voltage. Another welding inverter, which I completely copied from the Chinese, and a video was released on this topic. Moreover, there will be two devices, SMD version that will copy the Chinese one, and a DIP version with modifications and increased power. That's not all, I make two chargers for car batteries, and moreover, one of them is a starting charger. And these are only the largest projects. There are still a lot of small ones as well as completed but unpublished ones. Yes, I know you need to finish one thing before you start another, but in my case it doesn't work out because there is always a possibility that the components will not come in time, something will go wrong, etc. So you need backup projects that must be promoted in parallel. That's all my friends, let me remind you that as always you will find all the necessary links in the description. I say goodbye for a while until we meet again. With you as always was Kassian TV.